Hello guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel T-Spot. In this video, Owl Ender Season 7 Episode 6 just came out and revealed a few mysteries. We learned more about what Bree saw in the tunnel in the previous episode, but most importantly, the damned knuckle of E finally showed his face. It was a pretty horrifying scene. So before talking about the 18th century storyline, I'd like to focus on what happened with Bray and Roger in this episode. First of all, my theories about a potential portal in the tunnel turned out to be correct. While discussing what Bray experienced in the tunnel, they realized the tunnel was on the same ley line as Craned Dune. Let me explain quickly for those who don't know what a ley line is. Ley lines are basically imaginary straight lines between important historical and natural landmarks. Some believe that ancient people knew these lines and erected structures along them. Some even thought the structures along a ley line were powerful or magical. In Outlander, we learned that the tunnel was on the same ley line as Craned Dune, which means Bree saw a time portal with outstanding circles. But there is bad news. Now, Rob Cameron knows about time travel. In a great rush, Bray and Roger packed Roger's notebook about time travel and put it among his other notes. When Roger went to Jimmy's school to speak to students and parents about Gaelic, he accidentally gave his notebook to Rob Cameron. Rob's presence there was already suspicious. He said he brought his nephew, but we didn't see him, did we? Now he saw the notebook and knows what Roger wrote about time travel. He then invited himself to dinner in a pathetic way. He definitely wants something. He probably wants to learn more about time travel. He must have seen the thing in the tunnel and perhaps seeing Roger's notes about a portal in the tunnel, he wants to learn more about it. Then there is the knuckle of E. Not seeing anything about him, almost all episode, I almost lost hope of finding out about him. But when Roger saw him through the window, I was so scared, you wouldn't believe it. Then the rest was like a horror sequence. If you watched my previous videos, you'd already really remember I knew who the knuckle of E was. Buck McKenzie. But since a different actor plays the character, I was equally excited to see the face behind the name. I felt like Roger immediately recognized him because he was the one who interacted with him in season 5. Seeing Buck's reluctance to talk with the Mackenzies, I think he doesn't even know why he is there. He probably traveled through the stones by chance, ending up in the 20th century and has been trying to understand his whereabouts. I hope we learn more about him in the next episode. I am also reluctant to talk right now because I have a little problem with Jamie and Claire's storyline. The whole story is based on either character trying to save the other after one of them does something stupid. Shouldn't it be clear by now that wandering off when British soldiers are around is foolish and dangerous? She's like a child chasing a butterfly in the wind without thinking about the consequences. I know Claire and Jamie are both brilliant characters, but this repetitiveness in the story bothers me a little. Of course that doesn't mean I didn't enjoy the story of this episode. I was especially curious to see what would happen to Walter. Poor guy. Just when I thought he had enough traumatic experiences to go, he also turned out to have a heart problem and died. At least, Claire was there to hold his hand. To be a surgeon must be really hard. To think that you always need to help someone. That's why I believe Claire always puts herself in danger. She has this urge to help anyone in need and doesn't care if she gets lost in the process. Another scene that I liked was between William, young Ian, and Claire. We indeed saw how honorable William really is. He did what he thought was right and let Ian and Claire go. And when Claire talked about William with Jamie later in the episode, I felt like I couldn't agree more. He does seem to be the combination of Lord John Gray and Jamie Fraser. In summary, he is the luckiest man in the world. I couldn't end this video without talking about Rachel and young Ian. They bonded over Roanoke and I couldn't be happier. Honestly, I'm ready for their wedding invitation. Patient. My overall review of this episode is pretty positive. I really liked both storylines, but I should say for the first time in Outlander, I'm enjoying Roger and Bree's storyline much more than the others. That's probably because of the mystery element. I wonder about the knuckle of E. Rob Cameron and the portal in the tunnel. Everything is more exciting with the Mackenzies this season. But who am I kidding? It's because of Roger's new style, his shorter hair, and those lumberjack shirts. I love watching him in modern clothes, to be honest. That's it about episode 6. In the next one, Jamie will fight in the war as a rifleman, as he is a good shot. I also expect to learn more about Rob Cameron's intentions and what Buck McKenzie wants. Until then, leave your comments below. 
Did you like this episode? What are your theories about the 20th century storyline? Let us know what you think in the comments below. And don't forget to like, subscribe and share the video. Thank you for watching. See you soon.